Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. What I'd like to do is show you how to solve this absolute value equation. Now, this one looks uh, pretty daunting. As you can see, I have variables on both sides. I have variables in the absolute value and variable outside the absolute value. But again, basically, when we're solving absolute value inequalities, basic, you know, basically, again, basically, basically, what we want to be able to do is set up two cases, right? The cases where my variable is positive within the parentheses, or I'm sorry, well, my absolute value is positive, as well as when it's negative. So to do that, the first thing we need to do is isolate the absolute value. So I'm going to divide by 5 on both sides. So I have 6 minus 5x, absolute value. 5, 15x divided by 5 is 3x. Negative 35 divided by 5 is negative 7. Okay. Now that I have my absolute value isolated, now I can create my two cases. And I'm going to create a positive as well as a negative case. So I have 6 minus 5x is equal to a 3x minus 7 as well as the case 6 minus 5x is equal to a negative 3x minus 7. Now, notice when I made that negative, I used parentheses, right? Because you're not just making the negative th the 3 negative. You're making both of them negative. So therefore, I need to put parentheses around it and apply distributive property. So actually, let's solve this one first, all right? since we're kind of on a roll with it. <clears throat> so here, now what I go ahead and do is just add a 3x to both sides. So I have 6 minus 2x is equal to a positive 7. Now to go ahead and solve, I'll subtract to 6, subtract to 6. Negative 2x is equal to a negative 1. Divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2. x equals 1 half. Now again, what we'll want to do is make sure that we can, um, again, we'll want to make sure we can plug that value in um, to test our solution. But let's go ahead and figure out our other case first before we test our solutions. Here, again, I just want to get the x's to the same side, so I'll add a 5x to both sides. So I have 6 equals 8x minus 7. Add 7. Add 7. And here I have 13 equals 8x. Divide by 8. Divide by 8. Ooh, 13 over 8 equals x. So we have two, two, problem, or two solutions that do not look very fun to test my solution, right? I don't really want to, I mean, 1 half is not that bad. But still, you have to put in 1 half in for x, each of these x's, and then simplify it. And does the left side equal the right side? The same thing for 13 over 8. You're going to have to plug in 13 over 8. Does the left side equal the right side? And that 13 over 8 definitely is not going to be very much fun. However, what I notice is both of these are less than 1, right? Um, 13 over 8 is you know, less than uh, decimal. It's probably like 1.6 something around there. And so what I notice is if I multiply any number less than 2 for x, any number less than 2 for x um, is going to be, and then when I subtract 7, is going to make it negative. And remember, an absolute value can never equal a negative value, right? Absolute value of x is equal to positive x. Absolute value of negative x is equal to positive x. So our absolute value can never equal a negative value. Well. Any, if you multiply 3 times 1 half and subtract 7, it's going to be negative. If you multiply 13 eighths times 3 minus 7, that's going to be negative as well. So, again, so without actually having to check both of our answers, we can determine that there is no solution. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you determine if there is no solution by after we found determining our solutions. Thanks.